Okay, so moving on to uh, the national structure, um, this is uh, the second segment of um, the presentation. Um, we are now looking into the areas that we need to address at the top end of our triangle in order to be successful, but also has a huge value on what we're doing at the bottom end or at least in the middle of our triangle in order to make ourselves more progressive um, at the international level. So we have a current squad, which is our national team. This is a recent uh, squad that traveled to Spain. Um, there is um, a squad there that uh, has developed over the last you know, two to three years. Um, there's a couple of new faces in there as well from the teams that were progressive in, in the Nordic involvement. Um, but this is obviously our squad national team. Um, there is 13 players there. And then we have introduced this new segment around uh, the national team, the national structure, which is our development team. Um, and the development team was uh, an idea which we came up with in the summer, both from the men's perspective, the youth perspective, and also the women's perspective, is to have this challenging environment of 25 players um, involved in the national team structure moving into next year, 2023. Um, this will allow us to work with more consistent players, but also it will allow us to develop our uh, contact time better with the girls that we want involved in the system for longer. Um, and hopefully um, this will give us a, a great opportunity to sort of progress at national level. Um, some of the key factors in the successful teams um, in uh, across you know uh, international cricket are the ones who are investing time regularly with the girls over a long period of time. Uh, and they're the ones who have been successful, not every tournament picking new girls uh, or boys for that matter. So this is our, our national team. On the next slide, uh, we have highlighted and selected um, our development squad. Um, and our development squad um, is made up of individuals where we I travel to the north and the south um, to go and have a look in an open trial environment and hopefully uh, give the girls an opportunity to showcase their skills over a four or five week um, training sessions or sort of four or five training sessions, sorry, um, and select the best players available during them two sessions. Now, I'm mindful some girls didn't turn up or weren't aware of that. Uh, and there is an opportunity in 2023 uh, to come to the open trials again, um, but also be involved in our regional performance sessions. And, and this is where the next round of development squads uh, will be selected now. Congratulations to everybody in our in our squad of 25. Um, but one thing this does allow us to do is develop a performance culture, which allows us to drive each one of the girls to get better during the down period, but also really give uh, accountability to their performances uh, in the summer. Uh, there is obviously a couple of girls who are missing from this squad who feel that they've um, you know should have been selected. Um, but actually what it does is allows us to be um, really progressive in our uh, you know, selection, but also allows us to travel across Sweden to see some of the, the developing talent and hopefully get them involved into our structure, our national structure.